So in this video, I want to give you the five biggest dating and attraction lessons learned in 2020. Hi, I'm Bobby Rio. And in the past year, I've done more one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with guys, guys that I've helped eliminate their nice guy behavior, guys that I've helped get out of the friend zone or get an ex-girlfriend back, or just get that one specific girl that they've been pursuing for a really long time and take it to that next level with her. And I was sitting down recently reviewing the notes from all my coaching sessions this year, and I was looking for commonalities. I was like, what are the things that I've been finding myself having to repeat over and over again to all the different guys that I've been working with? And I wanted to create a video sharing some of the big lessons with you because chances are, if you're struggling in your dating life, maybe you, um, you know, maybe you do all right, but the minute you really like a girl, um, it never, it, it never gets to that next level with her, right? You kind of feel like you're spinning your wheels and the ones you like never like you back in the same way. Or maybe you always wind up in the friend zone, or maybe you just have a, an ex-girlfriend and you're trying to get her back and it, thing, it seems like you're making progress and then she pulls away again. So I want to share these lessons because I think a lot of them will be very beneficial for you in your own dating life and you can carry forward with these in 2021 and put them into action. So let's go through them fast. Lesson number one is when in doubt, when in doubt, do nothing. When in doubt, do nothing. Now this is a lesson specifically for guys who are pursuing a specific girl and you know, you're, you're, you're sort of playing the game with her. You're maybe things are going well, but you're not quite sure what's going on. A lot of guys who hire me, hire me for this sort of situation where they have a woman in their life and maybe she's pulling, maybe things started off really well and then she's pulling away and they start trying to get her out on a date again, or they, they, they're trying to, it's trying to change the dynamics so that she's chasing them more than they're chasing her. And inevitably what happens is there's always a moment where she doesn't respond to a text or she seems upset at something you did. And I get messages, right, from my clients and Bobby, she, you know, I texted her last night and she hasn't responded yet. Um, I'm thinking about texting her again and, you know, letting her know that whatever, you know, that I was, I'm sorry that I canceled plans or I'm, you know, whatever, whatever there is, right? I had a guy who emailed me literally five minutes before I got ready to record this. He asked a girl that he's been on good terms with, right? It's, it's kind of going well. He asked her to hang out next Tuesday and he sent the, the, the text to her last night. And uh, as of recording this, which was nine o'clock in the morning, she hadn't responded yet. And I wrote him back and I'm like, listen, you sent her it last night. It's nine o'clock in the morning. You're freaking out, right? He was already, he's like, should I send her another one? When in doubt, do nothing. Because here's the key, right? This is the key to this piece of advice. You can always apologize for not texting a girl back. You can always apologize for being too cold, but it's almost impossible to apologize for being too hot, for being too needy, for explaining yourself too much. So I had another client that I was working with and he, he canceled plans on a, a girl at my suggestion because he was, you know, working things out and, and trying to, trying to get her pursuing and investing a little bit more into, into things. And she kind of got upset by it and she starts messaging him and we need to talk and all of these things I'm explaining to him are good things, right? It's, it's actually what you want. You want her actually more invested. And he starts freaking out that he upset her. And so he messages me and it was like nine, 10 o'clock at night. And I didn't respond to the next morning. And I wrote him back the next morning. I go, Hey, chill out. And he's like, he writes me back. He's like, Oh, sorry. I, I, I didn't hear from you. So I called her up and we had this 90 minute conversation. And I told her that the only reason I canceled on her was because, and he gives her like the whole explanation. And I'm like, what are you doing, man? When in doubt, do nothing. You can always recover with a girl. If you send her a message and she doesn't reply back to you right away and you're not sure what to do, do nothing. If you, you can always, always, always apologize 
later if you, were, if you came across too cold. That makes sense? So if you didn't send her a message back um, and you're not sure, you're like, man, she just texted me and I don't know if I should text her back right now or send it to her later. You, if you send it to her later and she kind of goes, oh, like, why didn't you respond to me earlier? You can always go, oh, I'm sorry, I was just busy, right? But if, if you give her the other impression and you do too much texting or you're too available, you're too what I call hot, it's really hard to recover from that. You can't, you can't explain that away, right? If you're too cold, you can always say, I'm sorry, I was just really busy with work. And, but if you were too hot and she's like, yeah, you're just coming on too strong, there's not much you can say at that point, right? What are you gonna go? Um, I was just really busy and I was focusing all my attention on you and I just really liked you a lot and I'm, I'm like, you're just digging yourself deeper, right? When in doubt, do nothing. You can always recover from not texting her. You can always recover from saying, hey, I can't hang out tonight. When in doubt, do nothing. The second one that I found myself telling guys is do not send boyfriend texts until your her boyfriend. This one is something that I see over and over again. So one of the services that I offer clients is I review their text messages. And I'll say, take screenshots of your text and if you want me to look at them and give you some feedback on how you're doing, um, I'm more than happy to. And inevitably I get, you know, <laughs> pages and pages of text messages. And as I go through them, one of the things that always sticks out to me is, and I'll ask the guy, you know, as I start reading them, I'll be like, clarify again, how, how long have you been talking to her? And they'll usually say, uh, well, you know, I just started dating. I went on a couple dates with her or we've known each other for a few weeks. And I'll be reading the text messages and I'll be like, it'll be like nine o'clock in the morning. Hey babe, how you doing this morning? Hope your day is going well. And then, you know, later on at like 10 o'clock at night, Hey babe, just saying good night. Hope you had a good day. And I'm going, you're, you're treating her like you're her boyfriend and you guys are not even like sleeping together yet. Like I don't even send my girl that many messages, right? I've been with her for a while and I, I, I wouldn't like send her like wake up texts every single day. And uh, same thing throughout the day, right? How's your day going? And the girl go, oh, I had a bad day at work. Oh, tell me about it. What happened? Uh, I'm, I'm here to listen if you need somebody to talk to. And that's all boyfriendy type of stuff. And when you're not a girl's boyfriend and you start doing that sort of stuff, it comes across as really low value, really try hard, really kind of weird to her that like, why is this guy like acting like he's my boyfriend when I haven't even like slept with this guy yet or we slept together one time and all of a sudden he's treating me like we're like a couple. You're not a couple with a girl until time has gone by and you're actually a couple with her. Until then, you're just dating her. I have a lot of guys, they freak out. They're like, man, Bobby, she hasn't, I haven't talked to her in like two days. I'm like, man, when I, when I was dating girls, like, you know, single, like, and I started hanging out with a new girl, like, it's very easy. Like, you go two, three days without talking to them, that's fine. Meanwhile, I'll read these texts and it's like, they feel like they need every single day to talk to her. And what they're really doing, right, what this, and, and the reason this is so bad, is because you're checking in, right? This is what I call checking in. When you do this, these boyfriend texts is called checking in texts. Okay, checking in. And what is this stemming from? It's stemming from neediness. Why does it stem from neediness? because you need reassurance that she's still there. That if she doesn't hear from you, you think she's gonna disappear from your life. So you're checking in, hey babe, how's, how's it going this morning? With like 15 different emojis in it, right? That's another thing, that's, that's, that's not on here, but I've, I've told guys like, you don't need to have 20 different emojis in every text that you send a girl. Um, checking in displays neediness, right? If you have to say goodnight to her, from her point of view, it's like, 
why is he doing this? It's because he's afraid maybe I'm with somebody else tonight or maybe he's like needs to show me that he's not with anybody, but we're not even a couple yet. So why am I getting all these messages from him? If you're not a girl's boyfriend, you don't need to message her every day. You don't, she doesn't expect you to. You don't need to, she doesn't need to get a good morning and a good night text from you every single day. I know that may sound self-explanatory for those of you who don't do it. You may be going, who does that? But I can tell you from experience that a lot of guys do that. A lot of guys are doing these every day, multiple times a day, texts, asking her how her day was at work and asking her like if she goes, oh, me and my, you know, it was a bad day. Oh, what happened, babe? Tell me about it. I'm here for you. Give me a call. It's like you're not her boyfriend. Stop doing that. You're just a guy that's, you know, you should be doing and in, in, in what, what I'm um, going to talk about, right, is, which is actually number three, right? Number three, attraction trumps all. Attraction trumps all. And one of the questions I ask my clients when I start reviewing their text messages and I start seeing, hey babe, how's your, how's your morning going? Hey babe, how's work going? Hey babe, hope you had a good day, just saying goodnight. Ask yourself this, does that text that I sent, does it do anything at all to increase this right here? Attraction, no. It's all for your own good, it's all for your own like peace of mind. You're sending her those texts out of neediness. You're not doing any of that to, to send, to create more attraction. Now, if you're sending her something that's kind of funny or something that is, you know, emotional, like where, where you get her kind of like smiling and laughing, those kind of things could increase attraction. But when you're just checking in with her, it doesn't create attraction. And I have to tell guys all the time that nothing at all in um, the dating game is more powerful than attraction and even the game itself, right? So I'm kind of known for the game, meaning a lot of the guys that hire me hire me because they have one specific uh, woman that they're pursuing and they wanna sort of play the game a little bit better, right? Because if you've been a nice guy your whole life, sometimes you don't, it doesn't come natural to you, right? Playing the game is like, okay, take a step back, don't text her as much, all that sort of stuff is things that a lot of guys need to learn. Herein lies the problem though. The game always is less than attraction. What does that mean? It means if you hang out with a woman and when you're hanging out with her, she doesn't really feel attraction towards you. And then you go home and you're like, I'm playing the game and I'm not texting her and I'm, you're not actually helping yourself because attraction is more powerful than game. On the other hand, if you hang out with her and you're just creating all kinds of attraction with her, then you go home and you don't talk to her for a couple of days, it's fine because she remembers this. She remembers the attraction she felt towards you. Now, granted, um, you know, attraction waxes and wanes, right? I always tell guys, like you can't rest on your laurels because you had one good date with her and you can't automatically go, well, she was really attracted to me that night so now I can be her boyfriend. That said, attraction trumps game. So a lot of guys don't want to do, don't, don't want to hear that, right? They, it's like they want, they want the magic text to send. They want to, they want to, they want to play the game so well that they can ignore the fact that they're not actually creating attraction in her. So one of the videos that I have, and I'm going to kind of put a link to it here. It's a video on my YouTube channel. It's called the triangle of attraction, completely free video right on my YouTube channel. And what I explained in that video is that attraction what she feels towards you, that attraction that a woman feels to, towards you is based on three things. It's based on the fun that she's having when she's with you, right? The fun that she's having with you is like your playfulness, you teasing her, you guys kind of getting into, getting into things together, right? But it's also the fun she has pursuing you mentally. That's sort of the game, right? That's sort of fun to her. I always talk about the uncertainty of, is he going to call me? It's the tension, right? The tension is part of that fun. Tension is fun. Movies themselves are tension. A movie and a TV show, a dramatic TV show, or it's all based on tension, 
right? Ups and downs, highs and lows. That's fun. We enjoy going to the movies because of that. We call it fun. So fun has to be there both when you're with her in terms of the playfulness, um, being a little, um, a little bold with her, all these sort of things that increase tension. Attraction is also based on connection. And that's when she's feeling like, oh, this guy gets me. Oh, like he, we're similar, but not similar. A lot of guys make the mistake and think, well, similar means, oh, we both like um, dogs. Oh, you like, you like Shih Tzus? I have a Shih Tzu too. Oh, I love Shih Tzus. Oh, we're so similar. No, that's not, that's not similar, right? The similar and the connection we're going for is the worldview, right? The experiencing the world, going, telling her a story about how when you were a kid, um, you were like, you went to this trip or you went, you, the first time you went on a roller coaster that you were trying to pretend that you were brave because your older cousin was there and you got up on top of the roller coaster and like, and she can relate to that. Even if she's never been in that experience, she can go, oh, he's like a human being, just like me. He's real. Oh, like, and it's that feeling of like, I get him, right? He's not putting on an act around me. That's largely what connection is. It's, it's, it's like he's, there's no act. And that's attractive. When you're with somebody and you don't feel like they're putting on an act around you, it feels more attractive. And then there's the intimacy. That needs to be there as well, right? Because if you have fun and connection with no intimacy, you wind up in the friend zone. Intimacy is when you're with a woman and you stop and you look at her for a little bit and you kind of hold that eye contact. Or as she's talking, you look at her mouth and you, and you kind of look at her in a sort of seductive way. Intimacy is when you say something to her, like you point something out and you tell her something is sexy about her. That's intimacy, right? Intimacy is what you don't do with your friends. If you're friends with somebody, that's what kind of separates, right? You can have fun with friends, you can have connection with friends, but you're not intimate with them. So you need to add intimacy in there to differentiate yourself from being just friends with her. So that needs to be there, right? And like I said, I have a video where I walk through all this with a lot more examples called the Triangle of Temptation. You can watch it on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link right from this video into it. Attraction trumps everything though. A lot of guys don't want to hear that, right? They want the magic text to send. The fourth thing to keep in mind is that sometimes it's her. I give guys a lot of shit, right? In these videos, on the coaching calls, I I, I give guys a lot of shit because it's sort of constructive criticism, right? I, I tell you that, hey, you gotta stop being a nice guy. You gotta stop giving her the power. You, you made this mistake, don't make this mistake, right? It might feel like I'm bashing guys a lot of times. And I mean, that's what a coach sort of does, right? I have to kind of point out where you could have done better. But at the end of the day, and I had this conversation with a client last night, is that sometimes it's just her. Sometimes she's not a good person. Sometimes she's got another guy in her life that she doesn't want to tell you about, right? This is the common scenario with clients where they'll hire me and they'll be like, man, she's so flaky. She's, she's like, she, she keeps texting me back and she shows that she's interested in me. But every time I ask her to hang out, she can't hang out. And why? And he goes, what am I doing wrong? And I go, you're not doing anything wrong. Here's what's going on. And I tell you this from 12 years of experience working with guys in their dating life. When a woman's doing that, when a woman is leading you on, but not willing to meet up with you, it's 90% of the time. I, I even go far as to say 90, 95% of the time. It's because there's another guy in the picture, maybe an ex-boyfriend, maybe some other guy she was talking to before you and she's not really sure. And she likes you and she's keeping you around in case it doesn't work out with him. And in, those, in that situation, there's not really much you can do because if you try to text her more and get her out more, it's really gonna just backfire on you. At that point, you have to just say to yourself, listen, the timing is off. I'll reach out to her again in a couple months, but you know, there's not much you can do, right? Sometimes it's her. Other times, um, you know, a girl could be manic depressive. She can be bipolar. There's a lot of different things going on in her life. Guys go, 
she, she's like so weird. She acts so into me and then she's not into me and then she doesn't want to hang out and we hang out and I go, maybe she's just flaky, right? A lot of women are like that. A lot of guys are like that, right? I have friends who are flaky. Um, and maybe she's bipolar. Maybe she's got border personality disorder. Who knows? Sometimes it's her though. You can't always take the blame when things don't work out. I know guys like to think you can game your way out of anything, but sometimes the girl just has issues and it's better to walk away or it's better to put her on the back burner. And there's not anything you can do to change that, especially if she's not meeting up with you. If she is meeting up with you, remember point number four, attraction trumps all. But if she won't meet up with you, sometimes it's just her. The fifth lesson, and this is something also, right, that I've had to do with clients is widen your net. So one of the things that I've noticed with uh, guys that hire me is very often they hire me because they're hung up on one specific woman. And maybe it's a woman they work with or maybe they met her through some social event. And it's clearly not going anywhere with her. And it's been a year of, of it not going anywhere with her. And then they, they hire me and we start talking about everything. And one of the things I always say to them is, well, how else are you meeting women right now? What else are you doing to meet women? And they always say, well, you know, not, I don't know, not in, I go out occasionally to bars, but in 2020 with all the shutdowns and quarantines, that was kind of off the table. And I say, well, how do you think you can game this one woman? How do you think you have the, the power or the status or whatever, whatever it is when she's the only woman in your life? Of course you're obsessing about her. Of course you're sending her boyfriend texts. Um, of course you're worried about every little move that you're making because she's the only woman in your life. I talked about this again in, in another video I have, the number one mindset to get a woman chasing you. I'll also link to this where I talk about the, the attitude of abundance. And in that video I explained that you kind of have to have that attitude to be more attractive to women. You, ha you have to have that. You have to project that you have options, that she's not the only woman in your life. And in order to do that, you have to widen your net. So I don't know how many times this year on coaching calls, I had to tell guys, get on dating apps. I mean, especially this year when everything else was closed, if you want to be interacting with women, you had to be on dating apps this year. You couldn't go out to bars and social events and all that sort of stuff. You had to be on dating apps. If you're not on dating apps, you know what happens? You wind up at home obsessing over your high school girlfriend that you haven't talked to in 20 years. And then you wind up hiring me saying, Bobby, I want you to help me get my high school girlfriend back. And I go, whoa, so when was the last time you talked to her? 20 years ago. Well, that's gonna be tough. <laughs> you haven't talked to her in 20 years, right? Um, get on dating apps. Um, as things go back to normal in 2021, you know, join groups. Um, there's young professional networking groups. There's charity events. There's political groups if you're into politics. There's sport groups, right? There's intramural co-ed type um, of events. There's things like CrossFit. There's like hiking groups. Join groups to widen your net where you're gonna meet more women. You know, use your social, like build a social circle where you can meet people. I always tell people that I, I, I was working with a guy recently and I said, you can't just, if you, if you don't have um, women in your life, it's really hard to go, hey, I wanna bring more women in my life without having other people there. Meaning, if you're gonna try to create a social uh, uh, environment, you can't just bring one woman into it. You have to kind of become the life of it. Meaning, you know, be the guy that hosts get togethers and invite random people, right? So if you go to uh, salsa class, right? Be the guy after salsa class that invites four or five of the students to go out for a drink afterwards or to go to a, a salsa club together. Be the guy that is the center of attention, that, that, that brings the group somewhere. And then you naturally begin developing your social circle. Go out to, um, you know, uh, um, you know, bars and clubs I always put on the bottom of the list because they're really not the best place, but they keep, you, they keep you occupied. If you go out and you actually talk to women when you're out at these places, 
you're less likely to get hung up on that one girl that you haven't talked to in five years, but you can't get off your mind and nothing's ever going to happen with her because she's married with two kids. Like forget about her and do this, widen your net. Again, I have a, a video um, on my YouTube channel, the number one mindset, and it's all about the abundance mindset. And it's really important The guys that do the best with women naturally, they share that mindset. The mindset of like, oh, there's, there's always tons of women out there. The guys who struggle with, 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 with women, they have the mindset of like, that one girl I like is the only one, and if I don't get her, I'm never gonna have anybody else in my life any, anywhere like her. And when you widen your net, you begin to, um, you, get, you begin to see that like, listen, it's not that hard to find somebody new. I mean, I have clients, guys in their 50s and 60s, these guys are living rock star lifestyles in 50s and 60s. They're going on more dates in their, in their 50s than I, I was in my 20s because they're on all these dating apps, they're meeting all these younger women who are into older guys, and they're loving life. And then you meet some like 30 year old guy who's like, like I said, trying to, trying to get me to coach him on getting his high school girlfriend or his high school crush that he hasn't talked to. And even in high school, she didn't know who he was. I'm like, why are you focused on that girl when you can be on a dating app talking to like 100 real girls right now? So to review, when in doubt, do nothing, okay? And I was gonna make this one twice because I've seen so many guys mess this up. If you're not sure what to do with a girl, just don't do anything. Wait it out for a day or two and let her kind of pursue you a little bit. Do nothing. It's always easier to apologize for being too cold than for being too hot. Remember that. It's always better to apologize for being too cold than for being too hot. If you were unavailable for too long and she kind of gets like, like what's, what's up with you? You haven't answered your phone. You, I asked you to hang out and you weren't available. You can always recover from that. On the other hand, if she has the thought like, oh my God, this guy doesn't leave me alone. Oh my God, he, he's like always there. He's always texting me. It's hard to recover from that. You know, you can't apologize for that. You can't say, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I was just feeling needy and I was taking it out on you. Like, you can't really recover. Uh, then we talked about the idea that you don't want to send boyfriend texts. I'm just going to write shorthand. No boyfriend texts. And that's where we talked about uh, sending the text like, good morning, good evening, how was your work day? Oh, do you wanna talk about that? Like, no, she doesn't, you're not her boyfriend. Uh, number three was attraction trumps all. And we talked about, if you haven't uh, watched it, my triangle of attraction video, attraction trumps all. You actually have to make a woman attracted to you. She has to feel chemistry when she's with you or else everything else that you're doing in your own head in terms of playing the game is, is, is sort of pointless. Number four, sometimes it's her. Sometimes you have to walk away from a girl because she's crazy, because she is, um, she's clearly hung up on somebody else and she's wasting your time. And there's nothing that you're gonna do that's gonna, gonna change it, right? at that moment. She may come around in a few months, and that's why I always tell guys, there's no harm in reaching out to a girl in a couple months and going, hey, scrolling through my phone and realize it's been a shame that we, we, uh, we lost contact, what are you up to? And at that point, maybe the ex-boyfriend's out of the picture. But when she's giving you such flaky behavior, sometimes it's her, right? And you have to just kind of put her on the back burner and walk away for a little while. And the final one was widen your net. Put yourself out there. Do not get hung up on one girl, especially a girl that you're not dating, you're not seeing, or you haven't talked to in five years. Um, get, on, get on dating apps. Go out, join groups and charity events, and go out places where there's gonna be women so you get practice, you get experience, and you have the opportunity to meet more of them so you don't get hung up on that one girl. So. My recommendation is watch the video. I'm gonna link both of them below. Uh, the number one mindset, which is all about the mindset of abundance. I would, if you can take one mindset with you in 2021, it would be that. So watch that video all about abundance and all about using, um, creating that, right? Creating that feeling of abundance and actually meeting more women. And then also if you struggle with that, with attraction, you should watch the video on 
uh, triangle of attraction. I'll link to that below. And finally, if you're bad with text messages, I highly, highly, highly recommend grabbing a copy and downloading magnetic messaging where my friend Rob Judge lays out the key lock sequence, which is a much better way of text messaging women that creates those emotional texts, creates the kind of texts that have her chasing you instead of you checking in on her. All right, leave me a comment below and let me know what you want me to cover in my videos in 2021.